What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and CDS, and we're going to look at updating or setting a multi-select option set value inside of your CDS environment. So if you watch the last couple of videos, I've been working with option sets. That's usually to get the labels out of the system because we know that the labels have a, we know that the labels refer to a, an integer value behind the scenes. And the integer value is usually what you get when you use dynamic content. In this instance though, we actually want to set the values. So we can um, get these values out in the same methods we've used in the last previous videos. But one of the complexities around multi-select option sets and around any option set really, is around setting it based on the inputs that you're putting in. So for instance, um, if you have a, um, a multi-select option set on say a Microsoft form, and you want people to fill it in, and as you fill it in, you then create lead data. Um, to set multi-select option sets can be a little difficult because you'll need to know what those values are and, and get those through and then put them into the, into the system. So what we're actually gonna go through today is a way where you can use label values for your option sets. We're going to query it, we're going to get those values back, uh, and then we're going to write those values back to the database. So let's take a look at it. So here is my flow that I've got for this. Um, so it's got a few steps here, and I'm going to build this from scratch because uh, it's taken me a little while to get all the syntax and get everything right. Uh, but hopefully you can follow along and understand what I'm doing. So it starts off with a manual trigger. So this, this could be anything, but I've used a manual trigger and then I've used uh, some text with multi-select options so that we can uh, simulate or emulate uh, putting in a multi-select option set. So I've got this list here, and this is a list of uh, superhero teams. So this is something that I've been doing uh, for a demo recently. Um, and you can select one or more of these options, uh, and then we're going to get these values. So I've got things like Birds of Prey, Doom Patrol, Justice League, Suicide Squad in here. Now, the next thing I do after that is I initialize two variables. I initialize a fetch XML variable called fetch XML query. Uh, which is of type string with no value. And then I, I then create another variable called, um, I initialize another variable called multi-select option set. So we're going to use these variables because we're going to be looping through things and then we're going to be collecting data as we go along. So this was this is kind of one of the most common things is that multi-select option sets can have a multitude of values. So you could like pick like three of one value and then another one. So trying to build this in a flow where it's going to only set those values can be a little difficult. And that's why we're going to use these variables for this. So once I've done that, uh, the next thing I'm going to is going to to a select statement, so or select action. So this select action is so that I can take the values that I've got in my flow and then create that into a um, a sort of JSON style format or a JSON array. Now the reason I do this is because I had a little trouble getting getting around this problem of I wanted to get the individual items out of an array and then loop through those items. And I tried a bunch of things, and I think maybe I, I just don't have enough coffee today, but I have not been able to figure this out. If you do know a better way to get these values out, do let me know. But for now, what I've done is I've used a select statement, and this select statement, we're taking the input from this manual trigger, and then we're giving that a name, and then giving that, uh, and then assigning the name to the input item. So that's basically going to say for every one of these, um, every one of these entries, it's going to say name, and then it's going to put the item next to it, and that creates that JSON schema of an array, uh, JSON array, uh, and gives us that schema. Once we do that, we can then parse that. So the, the output is from this select statement, and we're going to parse that JSON because then I can get those individual names and then loop through those because it's going to understand that this is an array, so we can um, we can loop through those objects and get the uh, and get those values out. So that's why we use a parse JSON um, step here is that we we basically want to get those individual values so we can use it later on. Next, we come to uh, the first apply to each. So this apply to each is running on that parse JSON bit, and it's appending the string variable um, to the fetch XML query. So this variable that we, we initialized at the top, 
we're going to take the values and we're going to append um, some values to that string. So what I have in here is I have a concat and if I open it up you can see what it is. So it says concat and then we're opening the brackets and then we're going to concat this piece of fetch XML here, so condition attribute value, operator equals value, uh, then we're going to concat that with the name of the item in the loop. So we're parsing the JSON, we're going to get the individual name, the individual label of the team that we want to use here. We're going to insert that dynamically into this variable, and then we're going to close that out. So what this is going to do is this is going to loop through, it's going to take each one of those labels, it's going to put those labels inside this fetch XML that we're concatting here, and then we can use that for our fetch XML query. So what this will do is it'll loop through, it'll just create each one of these, and then we'll add them like all together. So what it'll do is it'll create that whole fetch XML query that we want. Um, and each time it loops through, it's going to append to that an initial string, and then we're just going to get the next one, get the next one, get the next one. So this is this is dynamic. So it, we don't need to say right if if it equals you know suicide squad, go get this value. If it equals you know this, do this. What should, what we're just going to do is we're going to do it in one one fell swoop. So we're going to loop through everything, get the one query, query the database once. So that's what this apply to each step does and what this append to variable, uh, append to string variable does. Next we move on to the list queries. So the list, oh sorry, the list records. So the list records is going to look at an entity called string maps. So string maps is a entity inside of CDS which contains all the option set values and option set names for each one of the entities that you have. So for every entity, that has an option set, it will have an entry or multiple entries inside the string maps table. The string maps table will show you all of the all of the entities that relate to those ones. So, um, so it'll say uh, the entity name is say contact, and then it'll have like for contact method on contact. It'll have the labels and it'll have the values, allowing you to match or map or map these things together. So this is usually a very common way to actually get these values back. So what we're doing in this instance is we're going to do a fetch XML query on the string map base. What we are looking for is we're looking for where the object type code equals contacts. That's the first thing. So we, we want um, just option sets related to contact. And then we're going to look an attribute name. Um, so this is the, the option set called Matt underscore superhero affiliations. So that's that multi-select option set that I've got in my CDS entity, or my entity of contact. So this fetch XML says where, so we look at the string map, we're going to match where the entity is contact, where the option set is called superhero affiliations, and this is in an and clause. And then we open an, a filter uh, with an or, and we say or, um, and then we paste in the values. So we're choosing. Um, so this is the variable that we've that we've updated through the apply to each, um, and we're going to say right, okay, passing pass in every single one of the values that were selected and none that weren't. So this will dynamically change our fetch XML query based on the number of um, options that you've chosen the multi select option set. So that allows you to just query and just get back the data that you need and don't have to get back everything and then create nested ifs and, and all sorts of craziness. It just allows us to return the values that we need at the time of running. The next thing we want to do is another apply to each. And this one is going to be from the output of the list records. And this one is just going to get back uh, and concat uh, the values for that multi slap option set. So multi-select option set inside of Dynamics or CDS is a comma separated um, string. So it's, it's several several um, you know integer numbers uh, that are comma separated, and that's how it's stored in the database. So if you query it, that's how it will come back. So in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to when we get those list records back, we're going to um, get those values from here and then we're going to contact those together. 
So we're going to concat on the items that we're coming back and we're going to query the attribute value because that's the name of the that's the name of the column which contains those integer values that are behind the scenes on the, the option set. So this is just going to get all those numbers for us and we're going to concat those together uh, with a concat and with the items and then we have a comma because we're comma separating all those values together. So that's the first thing. Um, so we're going to loop through that, take them all um, and then concat them all together. And next we're going to update the record. So in this instance, I'm just hard coding in a value. This is a test record that I'm going to show you in a moment, uh, but I'm just hard coding this in, but you can do anything with this. You can query other things and get the records back. I need to scroll all the way down to the bottom where my superhero affiliations is. Ah, keep scrolling. Uh, and then we have the superhero affiliations. So sometimes when you click on this, what, what will happen is you'll get an error message in the window. Um, but what we're going to do is we're, we're inputting a custom value here. So if you get the error message, just scroll down, click hit custom value, and then it'll let you put in a formula. So this is a little bit interesting. Um, <clears throat> so the problem I had with the um, with the when I was trying to write this is that we are we are adding a comma to the end of all those contracts. So we go into contract things and add a comma to the end. After the last one, we then need to actually remove that comma because if we don't remove the comma, it's going to error. So what we actually have here is a substring. So we're going to say substring and then we're going to pass in that variable. So this is the, the variable that we've got which we've got all the numbers in. Um, this is the start position, so we're going to start from zero, so the very beginning. And then what we do is we actually do a subtract. So we subtract the length of the variable because we know because we don't know what the length of the variable could be. It could be um, you know 37 numbers, it could be you know nine numbers. We don't know what the, what that variable is going to be. Um, so we need to we need to get the length of it. So the length checks the length of it first, and that's the first thing we're adding into the subtract. And then we put in a comma, and then one. So we're basically just going to take the whole length of the string. We're going to subtract one from the whole length of the string, and that's the only substring that we are bringing back. So a little bit confusing there, but basically what we're doing is we're just taking the length of it taking one from the end of it, and then that's the substring that we want. So we don't want 30 characters, we actually want 29 characters. So, uh, and then we just close it all out. And then, and that's that's all we're putting in here. So let's test this out. So I'll show you my record. So we'll switch back over to my dynamics instance. So this is Dick Grayson, uh, that you may know from the Flying Graysons, also known as Robin um, or Nightwing. Um, and on his record, we have all of these uh, superior affiliations. So uh, we have Birds of Prey, Mega Man, Suicide Squad, and Teen Titans. I can remove these out, uh, Young Justice, remove these out, and click Save. And then Dick's going to start with no, uh, no affiliations at all. If I go back to my flow and click on Test, I'll perform the trigger action. Then we're going to put a bunch of stuff in. So we can choose any of these. So we'll choose Doom Patrol, Legion of Superheroes, Marvel, uh, Teen Titans, for instance. And we're going to run this. Click Done. And then what I'll do is I'll expand each of these and you can kind of see what we're looking at here. So I ran successfully. That's good. So the manual trigger flow, we can see that the outputs to this is in an array. And this was where I had my first stumbling block with this, is that I needed to get each individual item from this array out so that I could loop through them. So that's in an array. We then initialize the fetch XML variable, which is a string. We initialize the multi-select option set variable, which is a string. And then we go into our select. So we're selecting these in the array and we're assigning them. Each one of these is going to be assigned a name. So this is the name and then this is the value. So that's like the schema. So this is a J this is now in a JSON array um, style format. At that point, we parse the JSON based on this content um, and we get out these things. So then when we go into the apply to each, the apply to each is based on the 
output of that parse JSON so I can call those individual names. And as we can see, we get these. So we're appending to the fetch XML variable. Uh, we've got the fetch XML in here, and we're getting that value out, which is this value here. That's this first one uh, straight into our fetch XML. And as we're going, as we can loop through it, we can see each one of those just put in, etc., uh, etc. Et then in our list records, we can expand this, and we can see that our um, fetch XML updates dynamically. It doesn't look great, it just goes in the whole line. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can use a carriage return in here, but we can see it adds all those things together into that single line that we had for that variable, which is really powerful. Then we do the same thing again. We loop through the values that we get back for those multi-select option sets. So we get this value, and then we get the next value, and then we get the next value, and then we get the next value. And at that point, we need, then need to count the length of the whole variable, remove one from the end, just use the zero to whatever um, of that value, and then we update the record. And if I go into our contact here, and if I just refresh the page, we can see that it's updated with all of those, all of those options. So we've got Doom Patrol, Legion of Super Marvel, and Teen Titans, we've got them all in here. But what's more is that this is dynamic. So if I go and I run this again, uh, and I say, right, okay, uh, we're going to change Dick's affiliations, and we're going to say he's only associated with Young Justice and the Teen Titans, that's it, no others. Click run the flow, click done, let's try to run through again, it's going to do all the same things that we did, and if I go back to this page and hit refresh, come back here, we can now see that he's only a member of two groups. So this dynamically updates a multi-select option set based on an option that someone is using. So if you are using a, you know, a, a, a form, for instance, a Microsoft form, you can update these. If you're using a multi-select option set on, you know, something else, you can take those label values and put them in. Now, most of the time, you actually do want to use um, integer values, but a lot of people don't really know what the integer value is of something, and this is a much more user-friendly way of handling, interacting, and then inserting and updating multi-select option sets inside your CDS or your Dynamics 365 environment. So, I know that was a bit uh, that was a bit lengthy. Um, it's not my my usual shorter videos. But I was really excited to show you guys this because it's something that I've been thinking about for a while about the best way to handle it and the best way to update it. And this is the best way that I've found so far. So I really hope this video was useful. If you did find it useful, let me know in the comments down below or drop a like on the video. That'd be appreciated. If you could share this with your friends, that's always helpful for my channel. Uh, if you've not already, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.